What is happening guys? This is the GoPro Hero 7 Black and just wait until you see the amazing cinematic footage that I was able to capture on it earlier today. Now this might not be the very newest GoPro on the market but in my opinion it is the best one to buy. I'm guessing you're watching this video because you either own one and want to know how to get the cinematic footage or you're thinking of buying one and if that's the case I'll stick a link in the description below so you can check out the best possible price on Amazon. There's a few reasons why I'd recommend the Hero 7 Black over the 8 or 9 and first of all it's the sensor size they're exactly the same in all three cameras so you're literally getting the exact same image quality no matter which model you buy and then obviously there's the price difference but when you look at the extra features that have been added on the 8 or 9 you have to ask yourself is it really worth that extra money so for example you can buy the media mod for the newer models but the media mod ruins your life it can overheat the camera, it corrupts files, so you literally lose footage. So in my opinion, you need to stay away from that media mod, just as much as I need to stay away from the kitchen cupboard at the moment. I bought this multi-pack of chocolate cake bars earlier. I can't stop eating them. They're delicious. So with the media mod out of the picture, what a... With the media mod out of the picture, what else do these models have to offer? The Hero 7 Black was the first model to include Hypersmooth, and if you ask me, it gives the perfect level of stabilisation. It removes camera jitters and... It removes camera jitters and general shakiness without making your footage look like it's been controlled by a robot. So right now I'm filming on the GoPro Hero 7 Black, and I think I've found the perfect location to shoot some cinematic footage. As you can see this boat behind me here, this is actually where Nicki Minaj shot a music video once so if it's good enough for Nicki, it is good enough for us. So those huts over there is where she would have gone to get changed and just under the boat here, tucked away out of sight, is where she would have squatted down when she needed to go to the toilet. In fact, if you look closely, this pebble here is the actual pebble that she relieved herself on. But as you can see, there's a lot of interesting things around here to film, so let's get going and create some magic. So if you like the look of that sequence, please give this video a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Now I achieved this look with just six easy steps and I'm about to show you exactly how they were done. Now step one is that you need to film in 24 frames per second if you want regular speed footage and 60 frames a second if you want to slow your footage down. A lot of people will just tell you to film everything in 60 frames a second and then you have the option of slowing it down, but this isn't correct. If you want regular speed footage, you really need to be filming at 24 frames a second to start with because converting 60 frames a second footage back down to 24 frames a second without slowing it down isn't going to give you as much quality as if you were to film it in 24 frames per second to start with. So step two is to shoot in linear mode. On the GoPro, there are three fields of view that you could choose from. You have linear, then you have wide, and then you have super view. Now the problem with super view is the edges are so distorted, it gives you that fisheye effect, and it just does not work with the cinematic look. Wide isn't so bad, but you still have the slight curves to the edges, and it's not ideal for what we want. So make sure where you can, always shoot in linear. So step number three is to make sure that you're capturing smooth footage. Now as I mentioned earlier, Hypersmooth in the GoPro Hero 7 Black is amazing and it will give you more than enough stabilisation. You can even shoot your footage handheld. Most of the shots you saw in that sequence were indeed filmed completely handheld, just like this, but there were a couple of shots where I was walking forwards and backwards where I decided to use this grip just to give me that extra bit of stability. But the main thing that you want to remember here is you don't want to be moving the angle of the camera mid-shot. Choose your angle and then move your camera in one direction or the other, side to side, up, down, but just do not move it around in different directions. So step four is all about the audio. Now as you can see we've got the entire sequence here laid out on the timeline and if we take a closer look you can see that between each cut of the video it corresponds with a key point in the audio. 
So basically what we're looking to do here is to cut to the video to make sure that it's in time with the beat. So if I come back to the beginning of the video here and just hit play, you're going to see an example of exactly how that works. So that was the first cut and you can see with the second one is where the actual beat kicks in. And from here I've just used straight cuts every time that a beat kicks in because if the rhythm of the music is out of sync with the rhythm of the video then it's not going to be as visually pleasing to your viewer. So let's move on to step five, which is the most exciting part of the edit, and that is the color grading. Now this is the unedited footage straight out of the GoPro, and if you want to have control over your final image and make it look cinematic, then you're going to want to shoot in the flat color profile. Now as for the rest of the camera settings, I'm going to leave all of that in the description so you can see exactly how I had the camera set up. So from here, whichever software you're using, you're going to want to find your color grading window and open that up. Now at this point you might think it's about to get very complicated where you're going to have to adjust hundreds of different settings to get that look that you want. Well you're wrong because there's something called a LUT and that makes this process very very simple indeed. Now obviously you do have control over all of these sliders and you can make slight adjustments if you wish but for now we're going to skip this stage and we're going to apply the LUT. So basically a LUT is a more professional version of an Instagram filter that's used in video editing software and they work in pretty much any software that you might own. Now Premiere Pro actually comes with a range of LUTs built in as you can see here but the problem is even if you manage to find one here that does give you that cinematic look these LUTs are not built for footage from the GoPro they're built for footage from much larger cameras like DSLRs and full frame mirrorless cameras. But fortunately that is where this specialist GoPro LUT pack comes in. There's 20 LUTs in this pack and each one will give you a different and very professional look to your footage. You're going to be able to get that high quality cinematic look which isn't usually possible on a GoPro. So for this particular sequence I'm going to apply the epic cinema LUT and just look at the difference that it makes. And finally to make things a little bit more cinematic I'm going to apply a slight bit of vignette and that is my simple but very effective color grading done. Now this GoPro LUT pack is usually $19.99 but for you good people watching my video if you check the description below there is a discount code which will give you 50% off. And if you look again at the difference here with and without the LUT applied you'll see that it really is worthwhile. So let's move on and take a look at the sixth and final step and that is to give your footage those cinematic black bars. Now what these do is they give the impression of a wider screen. Now there's three main sizes used of these bars and I have all three here so I'll show you what they all look like on the footage. First is just these smaller bars and they don't make too much of a difference but you can still see it already starts to look a bit more cinematic. Next up we've got the medium sized bars and when I was making this sequence I was tempted to go with these but I realised that this was supposed to be an epic cinematic look so in the end I went for the largest bars out of the three and that really did finish off this cinematic look. Now something I haven't mentioned is that if you were to go ahead and get that GoPro LUT pack these cinematic bars come with it as a free gift so you get all three different sizes in both 1080 and 4K so whatever look you want to go for you're going to be well equipped. So there we have it, it really is that simple to get high quality cinematic footage from such a small camera. Now as many of you will already know these things are great for vlogging and obviously they're good for action shots which is what they were originally designed for. But equipped with this new knowledge you now know that you have a powerful workhorse in your pocket ready to shoot cinematic b-roll at any point. The GoPro Hero 7 Black in my opinion really is a masterpiece and with the price being so low at the moment it really is worth checking out before you look at the newer models. So again I'll stick a link down in the description to Amazon where you can find it at the very best price at the moment. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this video and learnt something and one last thing when I was down the beach earlier I could not resist getting myself a cheeky little drone shot of that boat. So I'm going to end on that and thank you very much for watching. Bye. Uh -huh.